So this is going to be a presentation about uh, various. Hi, David. David. <laughs> uh, presentation about uh, techniques that you can apply to reduce the size of your system. Um, so first, I'm Michael Denacker, uh, founder of Free Electrons, um, and I've been interested in um, in topics like uh, size, but also uh, fast boot time and a small size is a requirement for uh, for fa fast booting. Like the, the fast, the, the smaller the kernel is, the faster it boots, uh, and uh, yeah, the less data you ha you can copy from uh, from storage. So, uh, why reduce size? There are various reasons for doing that. Uh, first, to uh, to run uh, on uh, IoT system, uh, systems, very small systems. Um, we like to use Linux uh, because of all the uh, f functionality that it provides, uh, which is sometimes useful. Uh, some people can also run Linux as a bootloader so that you don't have to re recreate drivers uh, for your bootloader and want to reuse as much as you can from, um, from Linux. Of course, boot fast, booting faster is one of also one of the cases. Uh, typically, uh, I've seen people booting uh, their systems on an FPGA, like the SOC doesn't exist yet, and it's really slow when they have to emulate it on an FPGA. So it's nice to have a kernel that is as small as possible, uh, because like it takes a few minutes to get to the command line prompt, even more sometimes. So it's, it's nice to have a very small system. Also, uh, one of the goals could be to reduce power consumption. Uh, and there's also the idea of running the whole system in uh, internal RAM, if that's possible, if the CPU has enough RAM, uh, internal RAM. Uh, that's the case of one of the processors that are uh, mentioned uh, on the uh, tiny.wikikernel.org wiki page. They, they have like a few processors that could fit the, the whole Linux kernel uh, and system inside the in internal RAM. Because the RAM is expensive in terms of power consumption, it needs to be refreshed uh, so if you want to keep things inside. And uh, I just added the security at the last minute because it was talked about uh, in the keynote this morning. Like, it, you could also try to uh, add some security by reducing the attack surface on your system, like not implementing system calls, and then helping. I mean, reducing the functionality that could could, could be vulnerable. Uh, the reasons for for this talk is uh, there's nothing much new, unfortunately, in this area. Uh, but there hasn't been any talk about size since uh, ELC two, uh, one year and a half ago. Uh, but I, I wanted to see what, how, how things look like now, uh, how, what, what projects, are, what progress pro pro projects may have made, uh, and also as a personal interest, looking at things I didn't try yet, as, and share this experience with you, like uh, trying with the muscle library. Uh, things like, so things that have been around for quite a while, but which I didn't play with yet. Uh, things like to Toybox, uh, GCC LTO, uh, some experiments with the latest GCC versions, compiling with Clang and, and things like that, just to share an update. And uh, so there's nothing extraordinary in that. Don't expect too much, but at least you'll have some figures which, which may help you in making your decisions and trying and uh, guide you in the choices that you will make. Um, and it's also, uh, I, when I submitted this talk uh, proposal, I also hesitated between a buff and uh, a talk. Uh, so I like to have like half of the session dedicated to questions and answers and pro I mean people talking about what they could do to, to improve size uh, issues and how, to, how they could get involved, what we could do as a community to, to make things better. So that there's a, like a, a buff part in this talk if we have enough time. <laughs> So essentially, how small uh, a, a Linux kernel, a uh, Linux system can be. Essentially, you when you have like two six megs of RAM for uh, that that a uh, regular kernel will fit within this size, and um, you uh, need a, something like eight sixteen megs uh, to have uh, enough space for for use for for use space whatever you do in use space for your applications and the allocations you make. Of course, you have. If you have more RAM, you have more performance because you ca can cache things. Uh, as far as 
So I'm, I'm talking about a regular system without uh, really doing anything really hacky to, to reduce the size. Uh, then storage, uh, you, you basically need between two and four megabytes of space to store the embedded kernel. And user space can fit in a few hundreds of kilobytes. That's really uh, nice. It's easy to have a, a standalone application that fits in within a few hundreds of kilobytes at most. So if the uh, user space is not too complex, uh, eight uh, to 16 megabytes of space is really more than enough. If you have a dedicated system, of course. So um, I'm going to give you, give you a list of things you can do to, uh, to reduce size a little bit. So of course, there's the uh, OS uh, option of GCC to reduce size. And it's nice because it, like, it uh, automatically selects the optimizations uh, based on what GCC can do. So essentially, it's uh, minus O2 plus uh, minus the, uh, the optimizations that increase size. Um, it's quite impressive if you look at the, all, all the options that are provided by GCC. If you can really want to investigate what GCC can do, it's, you have a very long list of options with very detailed descriptions of the, uh, the approaches that are, uh, that are taken. It's very interesting. I also make a quick check to see how, um, uh, what the, to see the impact of you using a more recent compiler uh, uh, on size. So that I did that on ARM. On the, on the board that I booted. Uh, so between GCC 4.7 and 6.2, there isn't much change in terms of the optimization power. Uh, it's just saved uh, 0 to 4% in size, uh, in kernel size. So it's not so much, don't expect too much from GCC. Uh, it's already already good doing a pretty good job. <coughs> There's also the link time op optimizations. Uh, the feature of GCC since GCC 4.7, uh, essentially, what it does is GCC keeps uh, more information about the source in a special format. I mean, in a special uh, ELF section. When it creates .o files, it adds some more information in special sections. And this is used at the end when linking all the object files together to, to have better uh, optimizations, like uh, inlining across the uh, various objects, uh, removing, uh, de detecting dead code, and things like that. Uh, and surprisingly, it so it's, it's nice, it's something you should try when you build software. Surprisingly, it even works pretty well on single uh, .c file, uh, files. So I, find, I found a pretty nice project, which is called, uh, from this guy, uh, SMCC project, single file programs. Uh, this guy took a few prog uh, regular programs like OGANC and other, uh, a few others, and just, just put all the the .c files together in a single C file. Uh, and it's very nice for uh, GCC benchmarks or uh, C compiler benchmarks because you have just one dot big .c file and, and, see how you, and you can play with the GCC options on all the, those uh, big C files. So this, uh, for example, OGANC uh, program was fitting in uh, 1.7 megabytes. So I used it several times uh, to, to, uh, to make some measurements. So here, if you want to compile with LTO, you just add uh, minus F LTO to it in, in addition to uh, OS. Uh, this is a link to more details about uh, LTO in uh, GCC. So with uh, still on OGANG.C, uh, if you use uh, you compare uh, LTO without LTO and with LTO, you can save about uh, two to six percent in the stripped executable, which is quite good. Uh, given the size of the executable at the end. So it's, it's pretty, pretty nice. That was on x86-64, uh, on my, uh, essentially on my laptop. And then for ARM, it's uh, the same kind of saving as well, um, two, minus 2.8% two in terms of the stripped executable, executable so you can sh like reduce a, a, a few, uh, t essentially a few hundreds of kilobytes sometimes if the, the executable is big, so that might be wor worth it or a few tens of kilobytes. Don't compare the x86-64 uh, code, of course, code size with the ARM one. You were talking about 64 bits, so it's not fair. Um, and then I tried Clang versus, uh, GCC, uh, versus GCC. So on, on regular GCC on, the R, on, on x86-64, uh, I made a test and still with uh, OGANC. 
and also uh, compiled with GCC, uh, Clang uh, uh, on the same, uh, same program, and I got a 5% size reduction out of the box without doing anything, just passing OS. You know, Clang is, is trying to meet this, to be compatible with GCC, so you can pass the same options, not FLTO, but uh, essentially the basic options you have, uh, they just work. So it's minus 5%. And then I, I compared it again with uh, GCC LTO. See, and GCC LTO is trying to achieve something like what Clang does. Uh, it's a bit less efficient, so it's less minus 2 to 7% here. So it's, it's doing some of the job that uh, G uh, Clang can do. Uh, GCC can still window for very small programs. Like in um, hello.c, uh, it's, uh, it's a, bit, a little smaller, 1.2%, one, one uh, which <laughs> isn't many bytes, though, <laughs> because it's a, it's a small program. Uh, you may wonder also uh, on, on the ARM platform whether it's worth it to use Thumb, Thumb 2 actually, on the latest processors, or ARM, the ARM instruction sets. So the ARM instruction set is 32 bit and, and Thumb 2 is 16 bit. Uh, it's more compact, but to express the same things, you need more instructions, and therefore uh, you don't like divide this, the code size by two, of course. So uh, to first to recognize the code that you get, uh, it's, it's good to do. You I am doing ARM Linux object dump minus s to like uh, on a on an object code turn it in, turn it into assembly and I, and, I, and then you can see the size of uh, of the uh, you can see the, how the code look like so for ARM you can see the ad the addresses are multiple multi multiples of four and you have 32 bit instructions while with thumb you have like addresses which are a multiple of two as expected and also 16 bit instructions as well so you that's a way to recognize them. I didn't, I didn't find any other way to recognize them than disassembling. And I, I did that because it turned out that my compiler by default was compiling for fun. The one that you have in Ubuntu compiles for fun by default. So you don't really have to think about using fun because it's often built in your compiler, uh, depending perhaps on the compiler you, you, you get on your platforms. So to compile in ARM mode, you can use minus M ARM and M thumb instead. Uh, and you can also, of course, tune for a spe specific CPU and see where, whether you can gain some, uh, some code size. So thumb in that case was like minus 7% smaller than pure than, than, than ARM. Though when I was compiling with ARM, I actually got a mix of ARM and thumb code. So I don't really know why this happens, but that's what I observed. <laughs> With this program, I, I had some, with MRM, I had some firm code inside as well. I don't mind. Uh, the next question is how to get a small kernel. Uh, since I, I'm not going to talk about the past, the, the very old kernel, so since 3.18, you can run make tiny config, uh, which was brought by uh, Josh Triplett. Is, is he around in the conference? No. Uh, and I looked at what uh, tiny config is. It's actually just make all new config plug plus uh, a config fragment. Uh, I don't remember exactly how to call it. So if you look at the, the make file, it's just uh, all new config plus a few edit settings that, uh, that actually reduce size. So it's even smaller than all new config. All, all new config. Look at that. It, um, what it does is. Um, use GCC optimized for size. So the code may be slower, but it's smaller. Uh, you turn on kernel XZ compression. Uh, there's optimized in inlining. Um, there's slub support. So slub is one of the uh, low-level uh, slab allocators. It's a little smaller than, um, than slab or slub in size. Uh, you just save a few, like 6 kilobytes or uh, 10 kilobytes. Though I didn't check on the memory usage. So maybe it's even better. Uh, it's supposed to be like saving a few hundreds of kilobytes in, uh, in memory usage in a re in real life system, uh, though it doesn't scale. And on, um, on x86, you also have like no high mem uh, support that's added. And I then ch checked the, the kernel size with tiny, uh, with tiny config. And it's not so bad. Like you expect like 
uh, the kernel size to grow uh, up and up and up and up. And actually, it's uh, so. Actually, it's going down on our, on the ARM platform. Um, so the total, uh, I'm looking at the to total uh, VM Linux size, assuming that it's going to be what you load in memory, the, 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 what you're going to consume in memory. So I, I didn't look at the compressed sites, though I will show it as well. So it looks like this, that's the, the, full, the full size. And it went down in the 4.4, 4.5. I, I, I didn't have time to investigate why. Uh, perhaps because of some, um, some drivers, like SOC drivers, being moved to a proper driver's directory and then being uh, optional. Yes? Did you strip your VMLX file? No. You did? OK, so the symbols are still there. Yep. Uh, no, I didn't. No. Oh, yeah. No, that's a good, a good point. Sorry. I could do that too. <coughs> it's just a regular make, so yep, that's true. So it's bigger than it's, it is at runtime. Thank you. Any, any idea who, what could have happened at, in 4.4, I mean 4.5 for the size reduction? <laughs> it's the same compiler, like, uh, at that time? Yeah. Maybe. That's good, anyway. Uh, if you look at the x86, it's more, progre it's, it's more like constant, almost constant. So it doesn't grow that much over the course of like uh, 12 versions. It's uh, a little bigger, of course. Uh, but it's x86 it's x as well, 64-bit uh, as well, so it's bigger. So it doesn't. You may think, as the, 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 the tinification project is not so active, that it's going to like grow very exponentially. It's not. It's not what happens. Really, it's uh, it's still under control. Uh, so, so it means we could like reverse the trend. I, I made a test. Like I really wanted to make sure uh, I have a kernel that boots. So uh, I booted the uh, for the ten kernel on on the um, QMU emulated uh, versatile PB. ARM platform. So the Z image was 400 kilobytes, which is quite good uh, with XZ compression. And uh, yeah, the total size, um, unstripped, <laughs> is uh, a little uh, over one megabyte. Um, and then I, I tried to, t with QMU, it's nice because you can reduce, you can like simulate uh, a machine with uh, the uh, how, how much, whatever amount of RAM you want. So I. Um, I went down as little as three megabytes, uh, and when, it, when I reached three megabytes in the system, I couldn't boot anymore. So uh, at least it boots with four megabytes. So with more aggressive uh, work, I, I guess uh, two megabytes or three megabytes are uh, probably achievable. So it's in between three and four. I have no choice in QMU, I, I think, to, to uh, like, uh, know exactly what the threshold is. And part of this could be an issue with a tiny code generator. Ah, right. So, so that's, that's one of my questions, too. What, what hardware could we use to, to play with those things? Uh, and it's, it's more likely to convince kernel developers if you're using real hardware than QMU to get some code uh, accepted. Well, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, so a few words about the state of the kernel tinification proje uh, project, which was started by Josh Triplett. And let's forget about everything that went uh, on before. Uh, they, they, uh, like about one year ago, they were, he, he had like a few uh, patches left in the, the Linux text tree and they were, they were, he didn't have time to, to, to care, take care about them and, they, and therefore they were removed um, from the tree. But the, the tree is still available, the patches are still available, or we could like uh, resurrect them if we want. <laughs> the problem is, uh, there, there, there's, uh, if you follow the discussions, there's uh, skepticism about uh, like, like uh, adding some extra con kernel configuration options to, to further uh, allow to remove features from the kernel. Like the kernel developers don't like to, they already have to deal with a uh, kconfig complexity, which is rather big. So is it really the way to go to, to add some more kernel configuration options to, to, uh, to, to allow to disable things? Um, this has proved to be useful in the past, like uh, 
you see the benefits of the dynification project and how small the kernel can be. Uh, and, I'm, and I meant to, uh, like 10 years back, I had a, a roughly the same kernel size I, as I have now. now. So it's uh, like people like Josh have and Mac Mikkel and others have been, done a great job of uh, keeping the, the size to a minimum. Uh, it hasn't grown over time. So it was useful, but is this the new way to go? Uh, and if you look at discussions, uh, people are more likely to be interested in exploring automated ways of uh, detecting unused features, unused code, uh, remo remo um, um, detecting that and then having mechanisms to uh, remove them from the kernel code uh, so that they don't, the, the kernel is smaller based on uh, what you, like you, like you trace your system, you, m you make it run and see what exactly what you use at runtime during some well-defined test scenario and then remove uh, the code that you don't need, like the system calls, the proc, the proc contents, the kern kernel command line parameters you never access. Uh, so that's maybe the, the way to go uh, according to the kernel developers. Uh, there's a lack of volunteers with time and um, <laughs> time to drive the mainlining effort anyway. That's, that's one of the problems too. Uh, a few words about LTO. It, c it can be an interesting solution. It was, the patches were proposed by Andy Keen in back in 2012. Uh, the, the problem is at the time the patch was submitted, uh, they were creating new problems, uh, but more difficult to investigate problems. Uh, so they couldn't be accepted back at that time. And yeah, people like Linus, like Linus didn't tr really trust the tool chains at that time. And, we're really afraid of uh, getting new bugs or yeah, creating new bugs with LTO that would be difficult to investigate. Uh, that may be worth trying again. <laughs> or another possibility is to use Clang. <laughs> 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 but, but that's so in the, one of the slides forward. You could also use, uh, if you really have a very small system, uh, one of the ways to go is to use uh, kernel XIP, execution in place, in which case you keep uh, the kernel text in Flash. So you execute kernel from Flash, directly from Flash, you never copy it to RAM. Uh, you just use RAM for data and, and allocated data. So it works uh, if you have no Flash, of course, uh, that's accessible as if it was RAM. Um, and yes, that's the uh, only solution if you have very little RAM, like Cortex N3 and something like that. And ARM is apparently the only platform supporting it. Uh, though there were some efforts on x86, uh, but they are not mainline yet. The last machine that I saw that actually used it was PXA 255. <laughs> <laughs> a, long time ago. a long time ago. So is anybody uh, still using that? <laughs> ah, okay. But it's not in the mainline kernel yet, right? Is it? Okay. Rob? So the question is, can we uh, emulate Flash on uh, QMU to, to, to use uh, XIP with QMU to like to for developers to play with that? I don't think you can emulate Flash. Mm. We had a patch like 10 years back, but they didn't get accepted, unfortunately. It would be awesome to have like no Flash on QMU. Uh, if you still want to help with kernel planification and, and add a few more uh, kernel configuration options. You can, uh, there are several things you can do is look for simply, uh, simply uh, obj-y um, statements in kernel make files. And you can see that, you can see some opportunities for simplification. Like here, do we really need ptrace support all the time, uh, which takes 14K on ARM if you take the size of the .o files. Or without reboot support, that would be fun. Uh, you may not need to reboot. <laughs> Because it's Linux, so <laughs> why would you reboot? Um, oh, there's a way of rebooting anyway, yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, another way is to look at the compile logs. I'm sure you do that all the time because it takes time to compile Linux and you can just see, why am I compiling that stuff? So um, then you, you can wonder whether it's really useful in your case or not and whether 
it could, how difficult it could be to, to remove it from, from the kernel build process. Uh, another thing you can do also, uh, I'm, I'm quoting some parts of the uh, uh, kernel wiki for tinyification. Uh, you could just use nm minus size sort in VM Linux and you'll see the biggest symbols. Uh, that we, so it's like the low, um, low hanging fruit, the, the easiest way is uh, the, the ones that would save most if you remove them. You can also, also, also use the bloat o meter from a Mac Mikkel that's still available in scripts uh, that compares two VM Linux files. Um, so it's, it's fa fairly easy. Uh, um, and it tells you which, it can detect uh, size regressions, functions that have increased in size uh, compared to the previous versions. Uh, there's the LLVM Linux project, uh, we, which uh, is trying to use Clang to compile the Linux kernel and effectively opens the door to uh, nice performance and size op optimizations, uh, and probably better than what uh, GCC LTO could, could achieve. Unfortunately, the project doesn't look very active. I mean, from the website at least, it does seem stalled. A any, any word on that, Vihan? We've all got busy with other things. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. busy with other things. Well, Awesome. So could, could the guy find the references? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I burn, burn out. I'll ask you. Actually, I'll, I'll send a mail to you. I'll get the address and I'll add it to the slides. <laughs> Thanks, Bernard. Nice. Uh, so there's progress. Good. Uh, now I'm, uh, I'm moving to user space and things you can do to reduce size. So uh, I compared uh, Busybox and Toybox, and I'm glad that Rob is here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so feel free to interrupt and, and, um, and, and uh, add more explanations if needed. So I just compared, like, uh, I built Busybox and Toybox with like this, the same set of applications, not necessarily the same features, but more, more or less I tried to, to, meet, to have the same features. So uh, I compared BusyBox and ToyBox. BusyBox was 100 kilobytes uh, and, um, and, 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 and ToyBox, as you can see for the same features was 84 uh, thousand kilobytes, a uh, thousand bytes. So it's, uh, it's, it's smaller for the same set of features. Uh, as you can see. And if you just want a shell, uh, Toybox is going to be much better. <laughs> OK. At least it works, but. I'm writing a new one. It's about four months Wow, OK. Oh, it can't. Okay. I have a pending directory, which is the same yep. as the Linux kernel directory. I think I've caught, I talk, took them from the pending directory. I'm not yeah. sure. Anything in the pending directory is like the Linux kernel staging directory. <laughs> it's not really merged yet. It's just sort of there. Okay. That's where I took it from, effectively. Well, at least if you can try and contri contribute if you want. Uh, if you just need... Uh, any other solutions if you just want a small shell? Um, there's like MKSH and stuff, but there's, there's like 11 different <coughs> shells I'm looking at as part of the research of doing a proper shell, but I'm targeting a, a full stack to replace it. All right. Awesome. I'm, I'm just talking about just something that can run a few things like mount and st start up a system without creating that, doing that in C, but yeah, for, okay. Thanks. So um, from what I found from Toybox, it wins. If your goal is to re you reduce size and have a tiny root FS, it's apparently better than BusyBox uh, for, for a very small uh, root file system that just uh, loads a few modules and uh, mounts proc and, and a few things like that. So it's sufficient. Uh, 
BusyBox would win in terms of configurability, like if you, for the moment at least, if you want to add like uh, color support in LS and, and things like that, or a few things uh, in, in some applications, um, if you have more elaborate uh, needs, but it's gonna be bigger. Uh, then I, I made some tests with uh, various uh, C libraries. So uh, I, I used BusyBox as an example of a program that you can compile. It's not really a typical program, but uh, that's one of the, compiles that the programs that, that you may compile. So uh, BusyBox, if you compile it with um, the muscle library, uh, it's with the same, statically with the same configuration as before, like supporting 16 co commands. It's, it's uh, 180. Uh, 3,000 bytes. Uh, uh, with a uh, ng, uh, it's 210,000 bytes, so it's more. Like you, like you say, like 330,000 uh, bytes. And if you compile, of course, with GC against uh, glibc, it's going to be like uh, 755,000 bytes, so it's much bigger, of course, but th that's expected. So we're if you're still using UCLIPC, you should really give um, a muscle a try because it's, it's nice. Uh, I also, just, just as I was doing that, I also compared the dynamic uh, executable size, uh, which should be the, almost the same on all cases versus muscle, UCLIPC, NG, and, and GLIPC, but it turns out that GCC is a, a little bigger uh, than, um, than uh, muscle and UCLIPC can be. And if you're looking at the hello.c program uh, with recent compilers, that's, that's again, the, there's nothing very new in, in that, but it's just to give you an update on what, what you can achieve today, uh, is with GCC 6.3, it's uh, 7,300 bytes for uh, muscle. So it's very fairly small uh, executable. It, of course, you can do much better. Like you can have a like, uh, hello program in like as little as like 60 bytes or something like that. <laughs> if you do a lot of uh, manual tweaking. Uh, with GCC, uh, the same GCC with UCLIPC and G, it's going to be uh, 67,000 bytes. So much bigger. And uh, it's almost 500, <laughs> kilo, uh, 500 kilobytes with, uh, with uh, GLIPC uh, compiled statically, so it's going to be very big. So uh, for small executables, uh, Muscle is also a clear winner here. Are people using a muscle in their products? Or more rubber UCLIPC? Any maturity problems with uh, muscle? Over UCLIPC? Yes. In some ways it's more mature. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Oh, that's nice. Um, and muscle is used in Chromium OS and hmm. uh, Alpine OS, which is uh, one of the Docker default deployment instruments. And it is actually getting a lot of real world libraries. All right, thanks. I, I, I was using uh, cross tool ng to build the tool chain, but it's nice to have another solution as well. <coughs> and there's still the old uh, superscript that still exists. Um, you can get it and compile it uh, very easily. Uh, it's just an executable that uh, eliminates a few uh, health sections that are not de needed at runtime, and you just save a few <coughs> hundreds of thousand, uh, yeah, thousands of kilobytes. It's not much, but uh, every every byte can count. Uh, and the nice thing about uh, strip is that it's uh, it's platform independent, like, unlike strip, which is really uh, for ARM or x86 or, or other platforms. Uh, Strip is platform independent. You can run it uh, as it, like compile it and run it. You don't need to be, you don't need, don't need it to be part of your tool chain. Uh, you have like the old, those old uh, C libraries which haven't been updated for a while. So let's assume they are completely installed. Uh, I also looked at uh, optimizing libraries on the target on target file system. Uh, you could use something that's called MKLibs uh, that's provided by distributions, but there's 
Um, there's no magic in it. It's just copying the libraries that are needed uh, for a set of executables. And that's, that's something I assume the, the, uh, the building tools like uh, BuildRoot or uh, Yocto Project already take care of, like uh, not co just, compiling, uh, just copying the, dot, the dot a, uh, .so files that are needed uh, for each system. So it's, there's nothing, it's not very interesting. And that's something you can do manually as well. Uh, what I'm looking for is something like uh, the uh, library optimizer from uh, Montevista, which is still available on, 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 uh, on, on SourceForge, which actually looks at the executables that you have in your system and looks at what parts of the, the, the shared libraries it uses and then uh, tries to optimize the libraries to remove the symbols that are not in use in your programs. Uh, though I have, didn't have time to investigate that. Did, is anyone using that approach to reduce size? Another way, of course, is to have a big static executable that just contains the, the parts of the libraries that you need. If you need, just need one executable in your system as your main application, you get that as well, <laughs> for free. <laughs> but if your system is a bit more elaborate, yeah, like you have multiple programs, you need shared libraries, and therefore you might want to, to reduce the size of, li of libraries. <coughs> to achieve a small file system size, uh, the best solution, of course, is to boot on an intramFS. Uh, because you boot earlier, you don't have to initialize a file, a file system and storage driver. Your kernel doesn't need to have one. Uh, so you immediately boot um, programs on, uh, uh, on the file cache. So that's very fast. Um, you can use a, si a static single executable. So no, no libraries to share. And you just include the parts of the libraries that you need. And you have a if you have a bigger size, of course, you can uh, use uh, regular file systems, compressing file systems, so such as QuashFS if you have black block storage, but we're talking about much bigger stuff. JFFS2 for Flash. Also, uh, if you have a small partitions, uh, UBI is going to be is going to have too much overhead, uh, so you can still you should stick to JFFS2. And then uh, you could also use uh, file si block file systems on top of ZRAM, which is a compressed block device in RAM. So you might you might use that as well. <coughs> but if you have if you have a tiny amount of RAM, it's, it's, you, you won't use that. But uh, as a, for a system that needs to optimize RAM and uh, still has enough RAM budget, that may be worth it to, to use this. Some conclusions before we, uh, we, we can go into questions. Uh, so there hasn't been uh, apparently recent mainlining efforts, but the kernel size is still decent if you use make uh, tiny config. And you can boot it uh, easily on the system uh, with less, uh, with four megs of RAM at least. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what you can achieve at least on ARM. It, it would be worth it effectively to try on x86-64 uh, on the Intel boards. Uh, for compilers, you can use uh, Clang or GCC LTO, hopefully for the kernel as well. Uh, and there's a new library worth using, which is Muscle. Uh, it's also worth giving Toybox a try uh, if you're si if like essentially you don't have like much scripts in your system and you just like run a few commands. Um, Toybox is going to help in reducing the size. And as we can see, there's uh, still significant room for improvement in user space and kernel space. Uh, I'm mostly talking about kernel space here. The the question is, can we add some more configuration settings to the kernel? To, to make other things removable. It's, it's, it's going to add to the complexity uh, that the kernel developers face. So are they going to, ac are they going to accept that? Uh, that's the open question. Um, and now I propose to move to a kind of buff part. Um, any recent achievements that I, that I didn't mention? Like so Bernard, thanks for the uh, uh, LLVM uh, porting effort. That's one thing I, I added to the to the report. Any, anything, any people to have, sh have seen something uh, on this area progressing? Yes, Rob? Um, in 2013, I sent some patches into one of these uh, NFFS for the RAM FS, the Google for the NFFS that you described. What are the advantages of that on the Zen system? Even if you don't want to, one of them is that if you fill up the root partition, it says full rather than hanging. And ah.
Wow. So was that for 313, you said? Uh, no, 2013. 2013, okay. So Rob was mentioning um, some, uh, some, some patches to, uh, to improve TempFS support. <laughs> Back in 3000, uh, oh, sorry, no, 2013. So uh, I, I'll try to add a reference to it. Thanks. Yes? Why, okay, like micro Yocto, was that? Was that micro Yocto or something like that? Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, is there any um, resources you are using that I didn't mention? And then uh, the most important question, perhaps, is like, uh, what community-friendly hardware we could use to to run uh, ten, the next tiny uh, next. Tinyfied uh, projects, so that we uh, we can convince we have like more better reasons for convincing the kernel developers to to uh, integrate code. Uh, if we support real hardware, it's going to be better than uh, just a QMU. So, any any suggestions for a nice uh, community-friendly board we could use for? I've been seeing a lot of these boards. They're they're taking off debugger headers. They're doing all kinds of stuff to make it harder and harder to do this kind of work. Like you're a community board, why are you taking the JPEG interfaces off? It's like, right. that doesn't make sense, but they are. Probably the Raspberry Pi 3 or whatever. That's true. You can also limit that down. With, uh, you could, but then it's, it's artificial. They will tell you, please you use my phone. <laughs> you can always use the mem size option. I mean, right. The smallest one that I ever did yep. for a commercial deployment was uh, two megs of flash for the user space, the kernel, and the bootloader. And uh, I think it had uh, four megs of RAM. And it was a, it was a dedicated, but it was a Wi-Fi access point. And that took a lot of tweaking in order to get everything. It wasn't the RAM that was the problem. It was trying to get it everything into two megs of flash. Mm -hmm. All right. We said, hey, can't you go to four megs of flash? And he said, no, we'd already bought the parts that was in the Wi-Fi. <laughs> So you have no other solution. That's that's nice, actually. Any other pr uh, solutions for, I mean, target hardware? Yep, I should look at, at and, uh, that. There's a page in embedded Linux or something like that with the STM instructions to do the kernel running of a T8 mega one and 2 mega flash. Oh, yeah. But they have Cortex and yeah. So no memory management on that works. Mm -hmm. that, that's probably okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, any anything else? What what do you think about uh, the the kernel tinyfication effort? Is there? Um, uh, I'm not sure we have the, the the right kernel developers in the room to to discuss that. But what what do you guys think? Should, uh, but, uh, the kernel tinyfication pro project, should, should we continue and revive the patches from Josh? Hmm. Yeah. I could help a little bit, like, for, like taking one patch and pushing it uh, from time to time is okay. It doesn't take that much time. Is it worth it? Um, you you got to need a good argument for well, that, so I think some complex complexity yeah, to the kernel. Question. I mean, if you're trying to run on older platforms, I think it, <coughs> it's worth it. But these days, you can't even buy, uh, you know, an eight megabit RAM part. I mean, the, you can't find them. So since the parts aren't available for these really small memory footprints, I, I don't know that 
I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting exercise. I just don't know there's much a whole, there's a whole lot of payback for it. Mm. Though we're glad that this work has been done for, this tinification work has been done because it's useful for us. So I guess we should continue in some way. <laughs> For uh, <coughs> you mean RAM usage or yeah, slash slash? Like yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. Right. Yep. So Rob says that using less RAM means a more better cache efficiency and things like that. So it's, it's worth it to to have more, less code, actually. Oh, yeah. Unless you have a dedicated instance. Sure, but for instance, one of the tenant authentication things was only groups. That's it, nothing else. You know, only one group. Uh, control groups gone. <laughs> so these are all the things that cloud needs. So sometimes the Kubernetes. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I think the good thing is that Linux is a general purpose system. You, you never know what users are going to do, so let's give them uh, more options. That's what I believe, <laughs> as Linus uh, said. Uh, so uh, a few references here uh, that's worth reading. If you, it's more for people reading the slides and wanting to know more about this. Uh, like, uh, like, for example, there's the uh, document from Timbird. It's, it's, it's quite old, but it shows some efforts to, like, uh, to look for, uh, I mean, uh, analyzing the, uh, the, 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 the kernel usage and uh, trying to eliminate things that are not used at runtime, stuff like that. Uh, and some, of some presentations uh, from recent conferences, recent enough conferences, given the history of ELC, uh, especially the work of uh, Vitaly Bull, effectively uh, booting Linux on <coughs> STM32 systems with uh, quite aggressive uh, solutions for reducing size. So you can get some ideas. If you want to contribute, the, those presentations are full of ideas that would be worth um, uh, exploring and, uh, and upstreaming if possible. At least you can discuss that with the community and see what, 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 what response you get, uh, whether it's worth it to have it mainline or not. Uh, during this week, you have other talks that, that uh, if you're interested in size, uh, there's a tutorial from Rob uh, this today. Uh, but building the simplest possible Linux system so you understand how, how simple a system can be. And Rob, Rob is one of the best <laughs> to make simple things. Uh, there's also the uh, talk about uh, optimizing C for microcontrollers from Camraj. Uh, it's more on the IoT track, but it's interesting too. And also uh, GCC Clang optimizations for embedded Linux uh, on Thursday, which is, could be interesting as well. <coughs> Any questions? Ooh, right in time. <laughs> Thank you.